Here's your fit tip today. I got one for you. If you are looking to lose weight, don't follow the Will Smith approach. Ooh. That's going to rub some people the wrong way. It is. Yeah, you he, know why? He's so likable. I, yeah. And I He's love so him. He's so likable. I, like I, I want to put I want a disclaimer. I fucking love, well, I don't know him, right? But his his persona. And I actually watched his whole series. I don't know if you guys watched the YouTube I series. I watched the Most first of one. It, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I got about course, halfway through. the first one. That's what, anytime we have homework, that's what he does. <laughs> yeah. I should have known. Should have just sent him over <laughs> the cliff notes. notes. Hey, look, yeah, I, three, I don't know I why. I got three kids, okay? <laughs> okay. I got three kids to feed. You sound like that guy Total Recall. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, I got five kids to feed. Take him to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> With the weird arm. I got five kids, man. Yeah. Oh. You know, at, no, it was actually uh I actually got emotional a couple times and it was so it was so good. Like he is so talented and authentic and just I don't know, he's he's up there with probably uh one of the, one of my favorite people as far as, you know, famous. But it always blows my mind. Someone of is his caliber, the money he's got, he's got a trainer who he's had for like nine years. And just the advice and the stuff they're doing is shit. Yeah. Um, and and what I don't know is this. So disclaimer, I don't know if there is this because what I want to be careful of is like you know what if I was hired to do something like this right? They said, hey Adam, Will Smith wants you to be his. Yeah. You're getting he's shit on the right. clock. He has a very specific goal of losing this weight. It's also uh, entertainment. Well, yeah. yeah. So what I don't what I don't know is if he actually does have a really intelligent trainer who's giving him better advice off off camera or maybe it was even on camera but they're like that's not juicy for tv yeah right you know we need to drama and because it does have that feel of they they're trying to dramatize the pound every week that he's got to lose yeah so i in the first episode right. spoiler alert uh he so i don't watch the second or third yet but in the first one at the end of the first week he gains a pound mm -hmm. yeah and he's really crapped out about it and i thought that was a great opportunity to talk about what often happens in the first week, especially if you're lifting weights, so that's especially the, if you're a man. So yeah. that's what I'm alluding to right now. What I don't know is, you know, did his trainer off air be like, dude, don't even trip. You probably built a little bit of muscle. You're probably water. Like it's not yeah, even, Why not body know. fat test? It's a scale. Right. Exactly. So I, you don't see any of that in the video. All you see is him like beat up. Now, I don't think he got that advice from his trainer because you, I, if you watch the next episode, his response was fasting. Mm -hmm. So then he goes right into oh, that's terrible. he goes into eating like boiled eggs and vegetables. Well, for he like, did that without his trainer's knowledge, right? Right. He yeah. didn't get that advice from, and I don't, I don't think his trainer would advise it. But that also too, like I feel like if if uh, if I was coaching him, like Sal said, uh, I would have used that opportunity to then say, "Hey, bro, don't trip. Like this is totally normal in the first week. Sometimes we're, we're going to see a little bit of a, especially when you saw how hard he was weight training. I mean, yeah. he wasn't training at all. Then all of a sudden he's weight training well, like he, that. Okay, you're talking. Okay, Will Smith, who in the past several times has had a lot more muscle on his body. Yeah, he's got he muscle played, memory. He played uh, I Am Legend. He was mm -hmm. muscular, right? When he was Muhammad Ali, very muscular. So he's got muscle memory. Stopped working out. Gained a bunch of body fat for his uh, his role in uh, King or whatever the, yeah. the, the the where he was uh, Serena Williams played that right. his father. So if you're gonna lift, if you're a man with that kind of muscle memory, he's obviously got some athletic ability because mm -hmm. he's got a natural build. You're go I I would have told him ahead of time in the first week or two. Don't the scale's probably not going to change or it might go up a little bit, but your body fat's going down while your muscles going up, and we're going to test body well, fat. Well, right. knowing his past and his body type, I actually the goal. Even if our goal was because their, their main objective was lose twenty pounds in twenty weeks, mm -hmm. which is very doable, mm -hmm. uh, in doable even the healthy way. But I actually would have said the first couple of weeks, I don't really give a shit. I want to go up. If yeah. anything, yep. Let's build right well, now. Well, I wouldn't even focus on the scale at all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's build the first like four or five weeks. Let's build the metabolism. Let's build some muscle, yep. and then we could really crank it up. To and the yeah, so their approach is bad. The I mean, they 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 start them off right away on like five to seven days of cardio mm -hmm. in addition to his in in addition to his weight training. The mm -hmm. intensity is is there. Training to failure. You see multiple times. He's you know last rep he could squeeze out. So. I guess where I I know I, from out of shape to that that's a really fast jump to train that way right away. It didn't need to. No, yeah, not only do you not to. need to, but it's actually counterproductive. Right. Yeah. That's and that's the point I want to make is that you know because uh, even though you as you watch the whole journey go through, he ends up. I mean, he looks pretty good towards the end, um, and he had good results uh, overall. If you're if you're all we're watching is a scale, but. I bet you if you watched the body fat percentage week over week, you could have made a way better improvement well, in that short amount of time. Well, people don't know this, but let's say you're 200 pounds and 15% body fat and you gain 10 pounds of muscle and you don't lose any body fat 
at all in terms of on the scale. So you've lost no body fat. You've only gained 10 pounds of lean body mass. Your body fat percentage has actually already dropped because you now have more lean body mass and your body fat total is a yeah. smaller percentage of your all body of weight. Overall. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's how percentages work. For example, <clears throat> if you know, if a guy like my size, let's say I'm I'm walking around at let's say nine percent body fat, if you were to peel all the body fat off my body and put it on a one hundred pound person, they would automatically <clears throat> be twice have twice the body fat that I have because it's a percentage of body weight. So the scale is um is not a great by itself it's a terrible metric. It's not and it messes with you all the time. And I only ever used it with clients if it if it also came with circumference measurements and body fat percentage measurements, so I could get lean body mass and fat mass. Otherwise, like you know, it, it's actually expected. If I were training Will Smith, I would expect his weight to at the at the absolute least stay the same, but probably go up because mm -hmm. of all the muscle that he's gained. And then they don't talk about in the beginning. I don't know how they talk about this at the end if they do. In that first week, I would have said, well, you're stronger. How's your stamina? How do you feel, right? Instead of you so crapped out because of scale. Oh, there was lots of lessons in this thing. Yeah. I mean, they uh, they were try they were being competitive with mile times, which was, I think, a terrible idea. They decide one day they're going to do a step challenge. Mm -hmm. He gets so obsessive with the step challenge that he ends up like pulling a hammy and he couldn't even finish it the next day. Mm. Yeah. Uh, he so had, now you have a setback. You he was, work he's out. writing his memoir in the middle of all this. So he had like incredible like stress and deadlines and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. And then like still cramming yeah. in like these 30 minute intense workouts in between because he had now <clears throat> you have to talk about the the brilliance though of what because like after I watched all of it and I kind of took a step back and went like, OK, let's take a uh, forget the trainer in me that's like wants to pick apart all the things that I think I would have done different. Mm hmm. I mean, I, I don't really even think that was the desired outcome here. I think that uh, this was a, a brilliant, creative way to launch a book. I, I agree. Yeah, exactly. Because the way they do it- Lots so of it, drama attached to that's the, right. the every, process. That's right. And every episode, yeah. he, he's he's breaking down a chapter in the book. So mm -hmm. just like how Jordan Peterson launches his his like his like 12 chapters and he gi yeah. they give you a little synopsis. Yeah, a little of what, snippets, yeah. So he does that and then intertwines it into the storytelling of yeah. losing weight. If that was the goal, I thought that was they, for sure it was. They crushed it. You got to know that Will's smart enough to know that one of the most popular things on YouTube are transformation videos. Mm-hmm. He and he's one of the most famous people out and there. And you got to show the drama. You got to show the struggle. Yes. You got to show the speed at which you make this happen, how hard it is. That's what people well, want to watch. And he already got like an insane amount of attention when he posted that. I don't know if it was on Instagram or the dad bod, yeah, thing. The dad bod yeah. thing just went like crazy. And so it's like, oh, wow. The response for that, I'm sure, you know, catapulted that idea. Oh, I, well, I actually think he already had it. He already had was, it going in. I think that, that was setting yeah. the table. I think that he did the King Richard thing. You got to know that he had the contract already for the book well before all of this. So the book was already planned to do it. King Richard thing comes right. out. He knows he puts on the most weight he's ever put on in his life. And then light bulb goes off. Oh, here we go. I know what I'm going to do. I'm in the worst shape of my life. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. I mean, I had a similar moment for myself when I decided to get back into fitness. When I decided to get back into fitness. Yeah, it it's was, very similar to what I you just did. so happened to yeah. be in the worst shape of my life. And I went, oh, this is yeah. perfect. I'm going to turn on social media for the first time ever. Like, I'm going to show a transformation. I'm going to, like, document the whole process so people can see it. And that I had the same type of yeah, idea. Yeah, this is the challenge with uh, fitness media, if you have any integrity, is how do I get the attention so that I can deliver the right information, but, all, you know, but also maintain my integrity? That's very challenging to do because you're competing with – people who are selling it in ways that are effective, which is the struggle and the, you know, the biggest loser approach and the crying and the hammering and I can't move and I'm so sore. And then you, you're you like, okay, I know that that's not the right approach, but the right approach is boring. I mean, let's be honest, right? If you did the right yeah. approach, well, that's why it would not the, be, I know, dude. That's why it's not the, drama enough. When you said that, oh, we could totally shoot a documentary like this and do it better. It's like, no, I don't agree. With well, that. so, so no, <laughs> I think that yeah. we, thanks for bringing that up. No, here, here's what I think. It's not going to be not, engaging. Not that we're going to do this. We're not going to do this. But if we did, I think it's, there's enough awareness now around these transformation type videos and fitness entertainment that the approach would be. I'm going to get in the best shape of my life, but I'm going to do it the right way. And then through the process, you're pointing out, normally this is what they show, but this is how you're supposed to do it. And then this is what I do, and this is what you're not supposed to do to show how you really do it. And then to show the results at the end where people go, oh, wow, it actually You would almost really need, I, I would think, like two different um, uh, like uh, 
case studies going on at the same the time, comparison. right? Yeah, the comparison of how Hollywood kind of portrays it versus like <laughs> it, it almost would have to be on a time lapse, right? Yeah. You'd have to like super speed, you know, the longer approach in order to condense it down yeah. to something. You know what's funny is that it's the the challenge and the uh, the difficulty of it is part of the sex appeal when people watch it. But people mistaken, because everybody knows it's very challenging to transform your health and your fitness. It's, it is. It's a challenging process. But people mistaken what part is challenging. They think the challenging part is, can I withstand brutal, destructive workouts and extremely restrictive diet for 20 weeks? That's actually not the challenging part. The challenging part is, can I make- Consistency. Yeah. Lifelong, forever changes- and that's what makes it really hard. And to be honest with you, and I'll argue this all day long, the 20 you know, week hammer my body, restrict myself is actually easier. It is far easier. In fact, yep. people do that all the time. People lose weight all the time that way. So you would just have to find a way to, to present the real way. In I a just way don't, that's, I don't uh, think that exists. Sexy. I really don't. I don't think it's, I don't think it is sexy. I think it like it, there's parts in there where, you know, they, they dramatize, you know, him quitting and him mm -hmm. like not wanting to show up the next day of like flaking on his thing because he's just like burnt out and all this thing. And they spin it in a way that it's like, like the, but the truth is, and then they cut over to the therapist every once in a while, which the therapist is probably the most logical person of everybody that's in the, in the documentary. Yeah. Like she's like, you know, encouraging him to do what's best for him yeah. versus, you know, like what he, he's got to prove people or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just, it's not, that's not sexy and entertaining to be. The truth is that the trainer who's meeting him seven days a week, if my client who's been burning the candle at both ends. If they're like, man, I am burnt. I yeah, I would, I would, what I tell him is like, don't come. Or I'd say, hey, why don't you come? Let's walk. Let's yeah. walk and let's, let's process what you're going. restorative. Yeah, let's just talk. Let's, let's get just you talk. a massage. Let's get you. Yeah. yeah like, which nobody wants to see that. <laughs> no. What they want to, what they want to see yeah. is that he's got adversity yeah. and then he overcomes it and yeah. he pushes through in spite of it. Right. And because that's motivating and that will give you those, those juices flowing when you, when you watch How it. How much does this conversation <laughs> remind totally. you of the first conversations? that we had when we started the podcast. Remember oh, that? We used to talk all the time about how are we going to impact the – it was a big lofty goal. I, I, we're maybe a bit narcissistic, but we thought we would be able to do this. And we said, how are we going to be able to impact the fitness industry at large and outsell – in other words, you know, reach more people than the other guys who are selling everything the wrong way, but it's sexy, it's flashy. We had lots of conversations yeah. about this. Like, we got to beat them at their own game. They're saying lose 30 pounds in 30 days by take a pill. We're saying it'll take you two years to lose 30 pounds. Oh, in a, dude. You know, it it's brings, like, how do we do that? It brings it all back, right? Because it is entertaining. Like, I was sucked in, like, and you you get into the drama of it, and, and this is just the narrative that just keeps repeating itself because people see that, and they're like, yeah, I can do that, you know, because – it's almost like this this one hard push and then then we're there you know and then oh, that's yeah. it and yeah. so that's a, that's a message that just keeps uh you know perpetuating our industry that's yeah. why i don't i mean one i don't know if it'll ever leave two i don't know if we could ever create something that does uh that is uh, as appealing but done the right way because right. the right way isn't appealing it's just not it's not sexy it's yeah, boring it's slow it's got yeah, a lot when I, of when i would watch the biggest loser i would imagine like what it would really look like with a yeah. good trainer like oh my god i can't do this anymore no no we need to stop you're going too hard let's relax a little bit oh you lost too much weight this week let's back you off the viewer would be like click yeah I'm, this is boring <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah dude, terrible you ever talk to like a, a police officer like a like an actual cop or an actual doctor about tv shows about like oh, law yeah. enforcement yeah. and in yeah. hospitals it's the same thing yeah. Like we'd never pull a gun out in yeah. that situation. Oh, yeah, dude, it's like, yeah. Yeah. or they're my, like, that happens one percent of the time. My buddy's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I have a buddy who's a cop, and he's like, dude, he goes, if 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 that was what it was like every single day, like we would like no way we would last. He goes, yeah. that happened like twice in my life. Most well, of the time, and, I'm and that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point in an analogy there too, because there are times when like. You're down. You're not motivated, and you should persevere and, and step up and go. But it's like that's the one percent, right? There's there's that few times where you're having that self talk or doubt or yeah. you're discouraged, and you should overcome, step up, let's do it. But they play into that so much that they think that like every time you you run into that, yeah. it's hard or you don't feel like doing it. That you should like you got this, overcome yeah. it. You know. You know what? Two things about it that stood out for me was um, that had nothing to do with fitness. One was the way the therapist talked about how Will Smith used entertainment and humor, how it was this ultimate 
protection mechanism, right? Oh, you because, missed what it got really good with that yeah. towards the the later shows. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I, I really like that because it is true uh, it, with people that it, one way to protect themselves from being ridiculed or bullied. Well, or, did you hear the story totally where it all started like, for him? No. So where it started for him, and he he's like tells the story. It's very emotional. Uh, There's like probably like three different uh, parts where I got really emotional in it, and he tells a story of him and his his siblings standing in the doorway and watching his dad clock his mom mm. to where blood was coming out of her mouth. Mm-hmm. And he said that moment changed all th- the trajectory of all three of the kids' lives. And his, he, he, he said his brother was fight, his sister was flight, and he was uh, entertained. Mm. And it was all to, you know, his brother would push back and fight. His, his sister would flight, run run from the situation. His was distract. Just deflect. Yeah, right? So just, wow. just def- by entertaining and being that. And that that's when that was born. So mm. that was his character from very early on. And that's and so he still is that guy today. And he tells that whole story. Was, you could tell. And yeah. it, you could tell, too, when difficult things come up, he gets funny. <clears throat> yeah. Right? It's like, oh, it's getting deep. Let's get funny. And uh, distract, you know, the situation or, or he, take it he, off. Boy, he gets into his. I really wanted you guys to get to the kids part because he I seems was, like a, a great dad. I, I don't know him, right? He might be just a great actor, bro. His, uh, his like uh, Jalen, mm-hmm. uh, try to be, uh, try to get emancipated. Oh wow, yeah. So, so I there mean, was a there was a struggle there. Oh right? yeah, he, he's had a, he had a struggle with all of them. Okay, his uh, Jalen. Okay, so his oldest is, uh, you know, Will the third. What they call him Trey. His his oldest. Um, he admits that he was the most naive with him, obviously, because he was the first, mm-hmm. right? So he was completely like didn't know what he was doing and learning. And then Jalen is the second one where he's, he's he calls himself, you know, Will 2.0, where he started to piece it together. But I mean, that kid wanted to be emancipated. His youngest one, Willow, is the one that he admits that woke him up. And it was she was she committed to a tour with him in Europe where she would get out on stage with him. She wanted to perform some mm-hmm. of that. And after the first night, she came to him and said, um, I'm done. I'm done, Daddy. And he goes, Oh no, honey, we, we still have a whole whatever to go and stuff like that. And she goes, Don't no, I I don't want to do it anymore. I'm done. And he's like, Oh, honey, we you've we've committed to the to the next month of of doing this. And he said the next morning she woke up and she shaved her head completely. Oh wow. and he said that woke him up and at that moment and he realized like that, you know, he wasn't hearing her and what she was trying to say to him, and then he took care of it. But he said that like it completely changed his life at that at that moment. But you're talking about the third kid, yeah. and she's already I think like nine years old or so oh, at, at that point. Need that signal to hear that yeah, pulls at you, crazy. man. Those Oof. those dad struggles. Well, that's why I wanted you guys to listen to it because it was a real. I mean, I I got all emotional listening to him talk about his mistakes. Do you know how and, old she was when he yeah. when this like was? nine nine. Yeah, and all the kids are all the and so and Jalen was his big moment of what after wanting to be emancipated from him was you remember when they did that movie together um, that flopped. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the I sci-fi the one, one. It the, was, yeah, yeah, the war, the world one, or the whatever, the end of the yeah, world yeah, one. Yeah, world, yeah. So he did that with his son, and it it flopped. It was like his worst movie he ever did, and that was the first one he did with his son. And he's like, he totally felt like he let his son down because he told his son everything to do in yeah. that, and then his son took on the all the criticism that came, and so that totally create a wedge between the two of them. I don't know. And, I don't know why yeah. any parent would put the, make put their kid. On a stage in that way, yeah. But what you mean? You, what if they want to, bro? If exactly. they look, if you're, if you're there, everything. I, then, so I, I, still, I mean, what are you gonna do when yeah, your kids grow up and dad, they want to be know? on that's the fine. podcast? No, no, that's fine when they're older. But at that age, I, look, I don't know. I remember being. A yeah, kid. you don't know because if you have because if you're young and talented and you've got talent already and you're begging, to, I, I don't know if I would say no. Like especially if they're talented and they're wanting to follow in your path. I don't know. It's tough. Age. It's tough because uh, here's the two scenarios. One. And this, I think, is the worst scenario. They crush and are loved by everybody, and they're nine, and they're killing it. And then at some point, which happens to all these child stars, they lose that admiration, that love, which they've created an identity around, which you're not going to be like you were when you're nine forever. Now people forget about you, and, oh, I can't imagine what that would do to me as a teenager, yeah. let alone as a man in my 40s. Yeah, you but know? I think that's naive of you to think that, you know, you're going to stop a preteen on their I, their dream maybe. Of, of following in your footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, the, what's the backlash from that? I, it depends on the situation. Yeah, but yeah, I would I definitely mean, It's real easy it. sitting out here for us to say that. It's but not ideal, right? Not yeah. You see the, I, the statistics with, like, child actors and what, you know, happens as a result terrible. of that. Right. I, I totally agree. They're terrible. But, yeah, it would be a tough conversation when, you know, they're going to want to rebel if you're going to just that's be like, right. no. And then it may backfire course, even this, more yeah. on you. Of course. So, so, every situation is different. That's a tough one. So I, I think as generally. a dad, you're over there, you're just praying to God that it doesn't happen. But, I mean, you know, being in it is a whole different 
try to find a way to do it differently. But I mean, of course, I'm I'm talking and I haven't been in that situation. Yeah, but, right, right. But I couldn't imagine getting like all these followers on social media as a kid, real popular. And then, you know, you go through your your ugly years or you're different. Now everybody doesn't like you anymore. You're not as popular. What that would do I mean, it would be interesting. Kid. I guarantee that one of us three, yeah. or even including Doug, one of us four is going to have to handle this one time. We all have young kids yeah. right now who aren't on social media that one day will be. By the time they are, I mean, you're already over 100,000 followers, the podcast getting millions of listens every single month. To you or to them, you're fucking already super famous. Wait till they're at an age where they turn it on and you think they're not going to want to be like that with you? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, I think that's- And the odds of all of us with all of our kids that yeah. one of them isn't? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody He's having that conversation yeah, in the next know. five years. Maybe I should make my kids my kids feel real insecure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what I'm nah, I think you'd suck. You know, uh, yeah, you're not ready. Construction, but, okay. yeah. dude. No, that's a, that's a tough one. Man. Oh, it's gonna be tough. I mean, I know it's gonna be tough. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.